Good morning and welcome to Christ Episcopal Church. We're so happy that you joined us for this morning's service. If you'd like to follow along, you can go to our website at ChristChurchPOK.org. There you'll be able to download this morning's worship booklet and follow along with all of the readings, the prayers, and the hymns. Otherwise, you can sit back, relax, listen to the beautiful music provided by the Christ Church Choir, the inspirational readings, and the wonderful ancient prayers. And know that God has truly blessed you this day and every day. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two, they covered their faces, and with two, they covered their feet, and with two, they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord say, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 138. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called you, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly. He perceives the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. The Lord will make good his purpose for me. O oh Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the work of your hands. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God. He saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled from their partners in the other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus's knees saying, go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The word epiphany means the manifestation of God, the revealing of the sacred, or it can mean a moment of sudden revelation or insight. An epiphany can come in many forms, a moment of clarity when you look out at the ocean after a storm or climb up on top of a mountain on a beautiful day, a flash of light or a thought or feeling that comes to you in prayer. But it is a moment when God's presence is known to you clearly. That moment or a flash of a moment when you say to yourself, of course, that's the way it is. That's the way God is or works. Or I see with perfect clarity the way that the world or my life fits into the neat order of the universe. And it's perfect. And I see it. And I am it. It usually only lasts for a short time, a few seconds, a few minutes at most. And if you are like me, you have only a few of these moments in your lifetime and you hold on to them like shells you bring back from a trip to the ocean and keep in a jar in the living room. They don't actually bring back the experience of the ocean, but at least they remind you that there is an ocean to return to. Some people call these experiences mountaintop moments to remind us that we never get to stay in them very long. The season of Epiphany is focused on this idea. The gospel readings are meant to teach us how to recognize the presence of God and what to look for when it happens. The season, of course, famously begins with the journey of the wise men who followed a star in search of God. These were people who deliberately and intentionally searched out the sacred. In today's reading, Simon Peter is not intentionally seeking out the sacred. He is sitting in his boat 
having finished a long night of unsuccessful fishing. We have absolutely no hint that he is pursuing or even particularly interested in having an encounter with God. Jesus climbs into the boat with him, apparently uninvited. Many refer to this story as the calling of the disciples because it has a lot of similarities to stories of call. But this story is actually an epiphany story. God's power is shown, made manifest, in the most ordinary and disheartening day in the life of a poor fisherman in the first century. Simon Peter is sitting in an empty boat at the end of a long night of work with no fish to show for his effort. Jesus shows Peter where to drop his nets and so many fish are caught in that one haul that two, net, two boats cannot hold them all. God's power and abundance are revealed God's presence in that moment is undeniable without invitation or expectation. In Luke's version, Jesus doesn't ask Simon Peter, James, or John to follow him. He simply reveals the reality of God's abundance through the miracle of the fish. And without much more, Without any formal invitation, the disciples follow him. Jesus, of course, is the ultimate epiphany. As Marcus Borg writes, as an epiphany of God, Jesus discloses that at the center of everything is a reality that is in love with us and wills our well-being both as individuals and as individuals within society. As an image of God, Jesus challenges the most widespread image of reality in both the ancient and modern world, countering conventional wisdom's understanding of God as one with demands that must be met by the anxious self in search of its own security. In its place is an image of God as the compassionate one who invites people into a relationship which is the source of transformation of human life in both its individual and social aspects. I wonder what we might do as individuals and as a society if we were convicted of God's love for us. If, like Simon Peter, we could visualize Jesus in the metaphorical boat with us. I am reminded of the story of the composer Handel. His life was full of misfortune he was in debt and had constant problems. Though he had some modest success writing operas and other music, he had a stroke in his 50s and was paralyzed on his right side. For four years, he could neither walk nor write. The doctors gave up on him. He wrote several operas, but again, he fell into debt. And at 60 years old, he thought his life was finished. Then he was challenged by a friend to write a sacred oratorio. He read the scriptures and decided to work on the Messiah. Legend has it that he wrote for 24 days straight without eating a bite of food. He was also, and this is confirmed, going blind. But he finally produced the Messiah, 
which many today consider the greatest oratorio ever written. Winston Churchill said famously, success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. And these mountaintop experiences, these epiphanies, these moments of spiritual clarity are precious markers along our journey. Reminders that God's love for you is without limit and your potential to explore, to create, and to love is only limited by your own fears and imagination, by your ability to endure, to struggle. And perhaps this is the ultimate gift of epiphanies. They come to us sometimes out of a focused and disciplined prayer life and other times completely out of the blue but they are precious reminders that, as St. Augustine said, we are all walking a sacred path. May we feel God's blessing and the knowledge of God's care for us as we continue on our journey and look for signs, for moments, for flashes, of God's care and presence with each of us this epiphany. Amen. The prayers of the people. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For our bishops Michael, Andy, Alan, and Mary. For Susan, our priest, for our wardens, Bruce and Anna, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. We pray for the people of Ukraine, those in Tonga, Afghanistan, and the people of Western Haiti. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially Pat and Angus. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for Betty, Peter, John, Bill, Linda, Kate, Griff, Phoebe, Walt, Diane, Rick, Kathy, Dennis, Cheryl, Donna, Regina, Joanne, Heather, Kathy, Craig, Celeste, Jessica, Helton, Edith, Rita, Bill, Sharon, Christine, and Mary, and for those with COVID and those in fear for their loved ones for those whose medical care has been disrupted because of the pandemic. I ask your thanksgiving for Bill and Cheryl's recovery from heart surgery, for waning COVID infection rates, and for the resumption of church school. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Good morning.
And during this season of Epiphany, we offer a close-up on a member of our Christ Church community. And today we'll be hearing from our own Cheryl Serino, the parish's verger, to hear how her recent surgery has gone and about her recovery. So Cheryl, we know that you had kind of a health scare lately. I sure did. What happened? I went to do some background check. My parents had a bunch of issues when they were around my age. So I said, let me go, you know, check it out. And um, next thing I knew that when it was on the table, they said, oh, you have 90% blockage. <laughs> Not even two minutes later, he comes back and talked to one of his colleagues. I didn't know where yet. He says um, he'd rather do a bypass. Yeah. So off I went to um, Lenox Hill Hospital in Manhattan. Oh my God. It's been, so this past Friday was two weeks and then whatever, a few more days and incredible. He did the robotic thing. Didn't know nothing about it. They were fantastic. I had a great experience and God bless. I was there at the right time. Oh, it's fantastic. It's great. I didn't, I, I don't know. I guess they, a lot of people say with this robotic, they do a lot now. You have no pain, honest to God, no pain. That's you know, it's not here under the chest. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's wow. uh, very grateful. <laughs> and it's great to be back in the church, let me tell you. That's and I, I do have this, I, I do want to thank everybody in the, here in the church that reached out to me. And I especially want to thank Kathy Bear. She she took me from my post op back to Manhattan so my son didn't have to take off or Jackie didn't have to take off from work. And I was so blessed. It was in and out. Everything went good. And the only little thing I have is I'm a little tired, but every day is a better day. So <laughs> it, I don't know what else to do but smile and Thanks. That Cheryl is a reminder that we all need to go to the doctor and get all of those tests that we postponed during the pandemic because they might find something and they might find a way to fix it before it becomes a bigger problem. I'm so, gonna second that, second so it. So <laughs> everybody get going, check yourself out yep. and uh, doctors are your friends. Yep. Thank you, Cheryl, Thank you. we're so happy you're back. Thank you. Thank you. If you'd like to make a donation to Christ Episcopal Church, you can do so in one of several ways. You can make a safe, secure online donation through tithely.com. Or you can text the word give to the number below. If you'd rather, you can send a donation to our physical address at 20 Carroll Street, Poughkeepsie, New York, 12601. We're so grateful to all of you who've continued to support Christ Church during this difficult time. May God bless you. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a balm
with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 
And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Eternal Spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, loving God in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echo through the universe, the way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world, your heavenly will be done by all created beings, your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth with the bread we need for today feed us in the hurts we absorb from one another forgive us in times of temptation and testing strengthen us from trials too great to endure spare us from the grip of all that is evil free us for you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. The bread we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share the one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. May we who share these gifts be found in Christ and Christ in us. pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May Almighty God, who led the wise men by the shining of a star to find the Christ, the light from light, lead you also in your pilgrimage to find the Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. <laughs>